Good morning. All right, back. If we want to take their seat, visitors retire behind the rail. We're going to get started. Thank you very much. To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes Pastor Julius Runenrick of Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. He is here today as the guest of Councilman Greenlee. I would ask all guest visitors and members to please rise. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. All wise and eternal Father, you are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Uh, Father, uh, we thank you for this moment. And Father, your Son has taught us that, that you are a spirit, and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, help us to recognize truth, that you are truth, that thy word is truth, and that the Bible is a book of infallible authority containing the word of God as he has revealed himself to humanity. God, remind us that the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our Lord shall last forever. God, we ask now that you would forgive us of all of our sins, Cleanse us from all unrighteousness that we may be found worthy uh, to serve you and to serve the great uh, m members of the, this great community in the city of Philadelphia. And God, we ask that you would bless our mayor, his cabinet, bless our council president, bless the, the members of, of the city council, uh, bless uh, God our police commissioner of the city of Philadelphia and in the entire members of the Brothers in Blue. Bless our fire commissioner and all the firefighters in this great city. God bless our sanitation workers, our educations, ed educators, our public servants. Uh, God bless our union. Uh, bless even our reporters, oh God. Uh, God, we ask. <laughs> Amen. God, uh, we ask that, that you would uh, bless the great citizens of this city and their friends and visitors. And finally, God, we ask that you would bless our children um, who are challenged by this postmodern social media society. Uh, bless them, God, because they struggle. And we find them freaking on, uh, uh, freaking on Facebook, twerking on Twitter, and acting insane on Instagram. And God, we don't want to lose any of our children. So God, bless and help our children. Let them know their value and their worth and teach us how to reach and engage them with activities that are age appropriate. And finally, God, bless this session. Bless all that will be done in this session. And we pray, oh God, uh, that all the things that are laid at this table, that you would give and pour out your divine wisdom upon these your leaders and these constituents of this great city uh, so that we might be able to discern your will and that it will manifest itself by our votes and by the decisions that are made here that will affect your people of this great city. Thank you now. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, who is the Son of the living God, in, G in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for those very inspiring words. Thank you very much. Lord, order, please.
Thank you. The next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, May 26, 2016. And the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, May 26, 2016 be approved. Second. Thank you. It's, it's been moved and probably second that the draw of the meeting of Thursday, May 26, 2016 stand approved. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and the journal is approved. The next order of business is request for leave of absence, and the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Council President. Uh, on behalf of the majority, there are no leaves of that request for leaves of absence today. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. Chair now recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the Republicans, there are no requests for leave of absence. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. At this time, I would like to dispense with the regular order of business, and I would like to thank everyone who has taken time out of their busy day to come down to witness their government in action. Uh, we truly hope uh, you find today's session an enjoyable one and a knowledgeable one. Uh, we hope you enjoy it so much that you actually come back again. So again, thank you for coming and being our guest today. At this time, the Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger, who will present a resolution recognizing the Salvation Army Greater, of Phil Greater Philadelphia. Will Colette C. McBratney and those accompanying her please join the Councilman at the podium. And joining the councilman, we have Councilman Jones and Councilwoman Bass. And Councilwoman Blackwell, Councilwoman Parker. Thank you. And Councilwoman Gim. Hmm? I am uh, truly delighted to be able to congratulate a group that is so important. And as I spoke to several of the young ladies this morning, it's something they're going to appreciate now, but very, very much so in the future. And to start off the, the resolution, I am asking uh, Councilman Jones to step forward. <laughs> so we all fight over Reverend Bond. I happen to have probably the largest number of facilities in my district. Is that right? Yes, you do. Yeah. And, all, and all of them, and all of them, are managed to be a part of a community, not a aberration. <laughs> Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we, we, we welcome her as a part of our community. Each and every one of them, whether it's 55th and Market, whether it's up in. Um, Overbrook uh, or Winfield, we, we, at the Croc Center, or even in Roxborough, you have facilities. So she's always welcome wherever she goes. As the young people say, she's good in every hood. <laughs> South Philly, too. So, whereas to be your best program grew out of the Salvation Army, Greater Philadelphia's desire to provide meaningful academic based after school activities for young women in Philadelphia and whereas the Be Your Best program teaches young women the social skills, manners, and life lessons to develop themselves successfully and with emotional maturity and whereas the Be Your Best program places a special emphasis on educational goals, career planning, and involvement in your community for these students and Whereas the Be Your Best program is for young ladies between the ages of 9 to 15 to gather for 11 weeks and helps build the foundation and network for these students. And whereas the Be Your Best program was founded in 2011 and graduated over 82 graduates from nine classes. And 
whereas the Be Your Best program was almost eliminated due to a lack of funding until Colette McBratney personally dedicated herself to raising the money needed to sustain the program for the young women and whereas the Be Your Best program continues to critically impact the lives of their graduates and their families for Philadelphia due to efforts of the students, volunteer instructors, and the generous financial support from their donors. Now, therefore, be it. Be it resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia hereby recognizes and honors the Salvation Army Greater Philadelphia Be Your Best program as an impactful and positive effort laying a foundation for economic academic achievement, as well as career skills for the future of their graduates and their families. And Colette, where are you? And, and Bonnie? All right. Get, get, get next to me, and, and you're going to say a few words. Both of you. This is a wow for me, I'll tell you. Just being in this great place, thinking what this means and to be here is just a pure delight. Uh, there are so many people that share this honor, but I want to say first of all to President Daryl Clark, thank you so much. To each member of the City Council, thank you so much for what you mean and all that you do, I'm sure you take a lot of heat at times, and what we do as the citizens of Philadelphia appreciate you. And then to two very special people, to Al Taubenberger, not only a friend, but a public servant. Thank you so much, Al. To Curtis uh, Jones, who believed in what we're doing and would do this proclamation, you have my highest thanks. Behind me, ladies and gentlemen, are wonderful young ladies. They're girls today but they're tomorrow's leaders. Our class has a, a motto, and we talk about it frequently, and it's a verse from Proverbs, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And indeed, he has directed our paths and done more than anybody could imagine. So the girls always say, we're what, girls? We're superstars, right? Can you do it on three? One, two, three. Superstars. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Salvation Army, I really want to thank you. You know, we love all of you council people. We love your staff. We are here to serve. And on behalf of this group, um, 55th and Market, we want to really say thank you. And I would be remiss if I don't acknowledge that Colette has brought two friends from Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and they are in their back, and they took time from their schedule today to be here. They are supporter or be your best, and they're always there for us. And her husband, too, Mr. Billy. Is Mr. Billy here? I didn't see Mr. Billy. I'm sorry. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. You. Billy comes every week and take all the pictures and do whatever this lady is telling him to do. Thank you. Mr. Billy, come up for the picture too. Council of I want you to come up, Mr. Bill, for a picture.
Thank you. Thank you. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilman Green, who presented a resolution recognizing June 2016 as Disability Pride Month. With Charles Horton and those accompanying him, please join the councilman at the podium. And joining Councilman Green, we have Councilwoman Gim, Councilman Taubenberger, Councilman Squilla, and Councilwoman Baz. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning as we are continuing uh, Disability Pride a Week. Uh, we had a great flag raising on Monday, myself and Councilman uh, Tom Berger and other members of council. I know Councilman Gim and Councilman Squilla and Councilman Dom were at that flag raising. So it gives us great pride to present uh, this resolution this morning. Um, whereas a disability is a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or, or major or more major life activities, a person who has a history of, or record of such an impairment or a person who is perceived by others as having such an impairment, a condition experienced by approximately 56.7 million Americans or 19% of the population, according to the most recent U.S. Census Bureau statistics, and whereas Conditions such as senility or neurocongenitive impairment, blindness or seeing impairment, deafness or hearing impairment, and movement impairment have historically elicited a mix of indifference, hostility, shame, and intolerance. Whereas this year marks the 26th anniversary of the passage of the Federal Americans with Disability Act, which prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities in employment, transportation, public accommodations, commercial facilities, telecommunications, state and local government services, and whereas the ADA has raised awareness of the abilities of individuals with disabilities and has resulted in great progress, which can be seen in everyday life through curb cuts, communication access, accessible buildings, and transportation, and whereas disability pride parades are held annually to celebrate people with disabilities and to change the way people think about think about and define disability, to end the stigma of disability and to promote the belief that disability is a natural and beautiful part of human diversity in which people living with disabilities, that's right, in which people living with disabilities can take pride. And whereas along with Philadelphia, disability pride parades have been held in a number of places across the United States, including Silicon Valley, uh, Santa Clara County, Chicago, Colorado Springs, Houston, Atlanta, Detroit, New Jersey, and Columbus, as well as around the world in locations such as South Korea, Norway, and the UK. And 
Whereas this coming Saturday, June 11th, Philadelphia's 5th Annual Disability Pride Parade and Celebration will start at the National Constitution Center at 10 a.m. with opening ceremonies, then parade down East Market Street to City Hall and Dilworth Park and feature several performances from local artists including Spin Choir, Johnny Crescendo, Gooch and the Motion, and the Danny Ocean Band. Now, therefore, be it... Resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that we hereby proclaim June 2016 as Disability Pride Month in the City of Philadelphia. Further resolved that a gross copy of this resolution be presented to representatives of Disability Pride Parade and Celebration. Congratulations. Well, I'd just like to thank the, uh, the council and the staff and uh, all the members of the Disability Pride Committee that have been working since, I guess, December last year, getting this thing together. Um, years and years ago, I came up with a t-shirt in 1987, which said Disability Pride in it. And my God, we've moved a long way since then. Uh, we've still got a long way to go. Disability Pride is about disabled people feeling okay to be disabled people. We don't need to apologize for our disabilities. We don't need to excuse them. We're just as human beings as every single other person on the planet. And that's what we celebrate. We celebrate our difference. Difference is fine. Everybody's different. There's no, there's no such person. Now, the normal person I've never met. I've never ever met a normal person. They don't exist. We're all different. And the disability is just another way that we teach our children our grandfathers and all of our communities so that's what disability pride is about we really hope that you come along if you can't make it all at least get to deal with and see some of the great musicians it's going to be a really fabulous day it was fabulous last year it's going to be fabulous this year and thank you so much thank you council beauties Thank you. <clears throat> At this time, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell, who presented a, presented a presentation for a doom day with Bumi Fernandez and those accompanying her. Please join the Councilwoman at the podium. And joining the councilwoman, we have Councilman Kenyatta Johnson. 
Thank you very much, Mr. President. This is an extreme pleasure. I heard the yays, and I don't know how many people we have. Is it? Up to a half a million. We have up to a half million people who visit our city and who help our economy and who enjoy themselves. We have people like the Une of Ife from Nigeria and people from all over the world who uh, come to appreciate and enjoy Odunde. And we're just so proud to have this privilege. And as all of you know, uh, certainly Bumi Fernandez is also part of the Mayor's Commission on African and Caribbean Immigrant Affairs and part of a wonderful family who participate in every way possible in our city and our government and in moving it forward. City Council, City of Philadelphia, citation, celebrating and honoring Odunde, Inc. on its 41st anniversary. The Council of the City of Philadelphia is pleased and proud to join with the community in recognizing and honoring a great Philadelphia tradition, the Odunde Festival. This significant cultural event is celebrating its 41st anniversary this year. Whereas Odunde was created in 1975 by Lois Fernandez and Ruth Arthur, the festival attracts at least 500,000 people annually and is the largest African-American street festival held in our country. The festival, whose concept originates from the Yoruba people of Nigeria, West Africa, celebrates the coming of another year for African-Americans and Africanized people around the world. And whereas Odunde is an occasion highlighted by a colorful procession from 23rd and South Streets to the Schuylkill River, where an offering of fruit and flowers is made to Oshun, the Yoruba goddess of the river. Odunde is also known for its authentic African marketplace featuring vendors from around the world selling merchandise from many African nations, the Caribbean and Brazil. And whereas each year, the second Sunday in June, Odunde takes place covering 12 city blocks. Odunde will be celebrating its 41st year in the traditional South Philadelphia location near 23rd and South Streets. The festival started in 1975 with a $100 grant and neighbors from Fernandez's South Philadelphia community. In just two years, the Odunde Festival exploded. The electric mix of vendors, entertainment, and music started to draw people from around and beyond the region, and each year continues to be no different. And whereas, although Odunde is best known for its highly visible annual festival, it provides educational, cultural, and activist services throughout the year, which supports its mission. Many of its larger programs are sponsored or presented as collaborations with cultural, educational, or business institutions which share Odunde's mission. They present a wide array of dance, musical, and theatrical performances, as well as workshops, lectures, and demonstrations highlighting the rich cultural heritage of the African and African American experience. Therefore, by virtue of this citation, the Council of the City of Philadelphia respectfully congratulates and honors Odunde, Inc on the joyous occasion of, the, of its 40th, 41st anniversary of the annual Odunde Festival. We salute the members of Odunde, Inc., its founder, Lois Fernandez, and all who participate in this great annual event for keeping alive this great community con tradition. Congratulations. I just want to say... Chair recognizes Ms. Fernandez for remarks. Okay. Thank you, Council President Clark. 
I just want to say thank you to Council President Clark, City Council. Um, thank you to Councilman Blackwell, Councilman McKinney, I mean Councilman Johnson, who support Odunde beyond just the one day, the second Sunday in June. Um, thank you to Mayor Kinney. I met with him about two months ago. He said, Boomer, I support you 110%. And I said, Mayor Kinney, I haven't felt this type of love out of the mayor's office in eight years, and I welcome it. Thank you very much. So I do want to tell everyone that Odunde, we are more than just a festival. We have an economic impact on the city of Philadelphia. And that's very key, because some people try to say, oh, Odunde, a little festival. I'm thinking to myself, I will slide across this table and crack you in your face. You don't understand how much I love Odunde, right? But my mom said, Boomer, always be professional. So that's what I did, right? So I just want to tell you some numbers. And I'm not picking these numbers out the sky. Steve Mellon of eConsultant Solutions, his team, calculated all these numbers. So at a state level, Odunde has a $30.6 million economic impact. We support over 380 jobs with a $3.3 million in earnings and create $740,000 in tax revenue for the state of Pennsylvania. Now, I know you're wondering, yeah. And at a city level, which all of you want to know about, at a city level, Odunde has a $28 million economic impact. We support over 345 jobs with $12.5 million in earnings and create over $480,000 in tax revenue for the city of Philadelphia just within that 10-hour period. So it's very key for supporting Odunde. Thank you to all of you who support Odunde. Thank you to City Council, Councilman Vondell. Thank you to everyone. And thank you to Congressman Bob Brady, who is a champion for Odunde, and he is priceless to me. Thank you, everyone. Council duties. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilman Swilla, who will present who will present a resolution to Kathleen Sullivan. With Kathleen Sullivan and those accompanying her, please join the councilman at the podium. Councilman Swilla.
Good morning, everyone, and then uh, just have a little technical difficulty in that we uh, the resolution is downstairs, so we just went down to get it and bring it back up. <laughs> so uh, it's always a good thing to be prepared. <laughs> At, at, at least it wasn't a wedding ring, right? What's that? I said, at least it wasn't a wedding ring. Yeah. <laughs> Old enough. To... <laughs> well, I guess I could sing or something while we're waiting. Yes. <laughs> well, Council will be, will be at ease for, uh, for a few minutes. Thank you. We're waiting to cure some of these technical difficulties. The chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I wanted to recognize two young people um, that are here today, Ian Watson and Keisha Watson um, from Lower Marion High School. Uh, one 16 years old. Uh, both of them live in the 4th District. Uh, and next year, they're taking music up at... Um, the Settlement Music School, one plays the drums, the other one is on the basketball team, join Sharon Baptist's AAU team, uh, and uh, also Lower Marion High School's basketball team, and I would say Kobe Bryant who? We recognize them from the Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, and congratulations on the recognition. At this time, the chair does now recognize Councilman Squilla for a presentation to recognize the resolution uh, honored to Kathleen Sullivan and those that accompany here at the dais at the podium. Thank you. Thank you. I'm also joined by uh, Councilwoman Bass and Councilman Dom to present this well-long-awaited resolution 
for our dear friend Kathleen Sullivan. And I just want to say before we start, <clears throat> real quick, is that you know when you have issues and you have problems and you need somebody to go to, it's always nice that you can have somebody that you reach out to that gets back to you. And that's not always the case in all the fields. <clears throat> but Kathleen was always there, even if it was an answer we didn't like. She was there to give us the answer and work with us to make sure that we uh, at least knew that the Comcast uh, was listening to our concerns. So, I mean, that's a great, great honor, and uh, Kathleen has just been such a big part of that. So today, we're recognizing Kathleen. The Council of City of Philadelphia is pleased and proud to recognize and honor Kathleen Sullivan on the occasion of her retirement from the Comcast following 15 years of loyal and dedicated service. Whereas, Kathleen Sullivan is the fourth of nine children born to Catherine Hannah Faye Sullivan and Larry Sullivan, a former Philadelphia police officer. She was raised in the Kensington section of Philadelphia and attended Little Flower High School and Temple University. Go Temple. Whereas during her, her 15 year tenure at Comcast from 2001 to 2016, Ms. Sullivan has proved extraordinary service working, has provided extraordinary service working closely with the City of Philadelphia and leading Comcast government affairs through several challenging initiatives, including Philadelphia Rights of Way, Time Warner Comcast Transfer, and Comcast Philadelphia Franchise Renewal in 2015. As a lobbyist for Comcast, Ms. Sullivan's leadership and expertise in city government made her a force to be reckoned with and championing legislative issues germane to the cable industry. As an advocate for the underserved, Ms. Sullivan has been a champion for numerous nonprofits throughout Philadelphia, including board memberships with the Philadelphia Police Athletic League, Coaches for Cancer, her alma mater, Little, Little Flower High School for Girls, Philadelphia Sports Congress, and many others. And Whereas prior to working for Comcast, Kathleen Sullivan served as Philadelphia City Representative under Mayor Rendell from 1992 until 2000. While working as City Representative, Kathleen resurrected the Philadelphia Marathon to grow it into a major competitive marathon, play in the annual City Hall Gala to raise funds for the beautification and maintenance of Philadelphia City Hall, implemented the annual Fashion Fest Philadelphia to the city to showcase creative designers and fashion retail, retained and grew the annual Core States Bike Race by securing major sponsors, was one of three inaugural executive directors of Welcome America, a 10-day citywide festival to celebrate America's birthday in America's birthplace, and launched events like the Philadelphia Freedom Festival, the annual Independence Day ceremony, Night Out on the Parkway, Wawa Hoagie Day, Knockout Night, free mega concerts on the Parkway, and free fireworks extravaganzas, and officiated the July 4th presentation of the Philadelphia Liberty Medal to dignitaries like Willem de Klerk, Nelson Mandela, Vaclav Havel, Sadako Ogata, Shimon Perez, King Hussein, Ted Turner, and CNN, George Mitchell, and Kim DeJong, work with the Center City retail outlets to rejuvenate the annual Center City holiday celebration, launching a multi-day holiday festival and parade centered around the annual holiday tree lighting, launched the annual PAL PAL Day at City Hall, bringing youth from the police athletic programs to shadow city officials, including the mayor of Philadelphia, led hospitality events for the NCAA Women's Final Four, helped to launch the first annual Philadelphia College Festival, now a widely recognized nonprofit organization known as Campus Philly, and led the fundraising and artist selection efforts to create and bring the Irish Memorial by renowned sculptor Glenna Goodacre to Philadelphia and... Wow, that's a lot. Whereas Kathleen Sullivan is well respected by her superiors and colleagues, and her president Comcast will be sorely missed. Her spirit and enthusiasm have been a paramount to the position influence, and she is held in high esteem by all. 
Kathleen has made a positive impact on many people who have been enriched by her knowledge and enhanced by her wisdom. And therefore, by virtue of the citation in the City Council of Philadelphia, does hereby recognize and honor Kathleen Sullivan on the occasion of her retirement following 15 years of loyal and dedicated services. We wish Kathleen a retirement full of good health, happiness, and the joys of family and friends extend their sincere respect and admiration of this legislative body. Congratulations. <laughs> Chair recognizes Ms. Sullivan for her remarks. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, when I walked in this morning at about 9.45, I was talking to some of my friends uh, at security in the northeast corner, and I looked over and I saw my family, and my heart started racing. This is the first I found out that I was going to receive this honor, and uh, I, I, I'm just overwhelmed by it. So, President Clark, thank you so much for your time and for all the council. What is he saying back there? <laughs> oh, it's Bobby Heenan! <laughs> we, all right, we love you, you Kathleen. <laughs> thank you, too. Uh, but I would like to thank all the uh, council members. I began my career as an official court reporter for Judge Charles Lord, which is when I knew Brian O'Neill, so he's old, too. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and if you were to say that in 1973 I was going to be up here in front of this esteemed body, surrounded by, by my wonderful family and friends, I would have never believed it. So it's just, it's just beyond my comprehension. So I want to thank you for that. But I have a few other people to thank, and I promise not to be like Sally Fields or Gwyneth Paltrow. But uh, my colleague, Sharon Powell, uh, and actually, I don't want to be a court reporter and correct everybody, which my family accuses me of all the time, but I started in 2000 because I, I don't want Comcast to cheat me out of a year of my pension. So it's 16 years. Uh, soon after I started with Comcast, Sharon and I had a meeting up in Union, New Jersey, and it was snowing. There was like two feet on the ground, two foot of snow on the ground. We get up there, we go into the meeting, they say, turn off your phones. So I go to turn off my phone, it's not there. So I'm like, I have to, I'm just new, now I have to report that I lost my phone. So we go outside, so I said to Sharon, we're, and we're both in our fur hat and fur coat, uh, fake fur, but as Wendy Williams would say, we look good. So anyway, we're on the, gro we're on the ground looking for the phone. She calls it, and I say, Sharon, I think I can hear it. So I'm crawling under her gigantic van looking for my phone. So sure enough, I find it. I get, I get the phone. I hand it to Sharon. So we, we get in the car, and we're driving. And all of a sudden, I got really embarrassed, and I said, Sharon, why didn't I just ask you to move the car? <laughs> so at that point, we dubbed each other Laverne and Shirley. So, uh, <laughs> and we've had many moments uh, since then uh, like that, some funny, funny stories. We could write a tragedy and a comedy, but Sharon, I love you. Uh, we were each other's safety net. Uh, we were there through thick and thin, and I will miss you dearly. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's hear it for Sharon. Uh, there's also, uh, I'd, I'd like to say something, uh, it's always wonderful working with council and having our debates and our mental gymnastics, but your staff, the council staff is like second to none. Any and I know last year with the franchise, it's like I, I was like a bad penny, I wouldn't go away and coming into everybody's office and, and the staff was just so knowledgeable and, uh, and always would hear us out and take the issues to their bosses and so, so for all the council staff, I can't name you individually, but thank you so much. Uh, included in running around the hall, we had several lobbyists, and we, Sharon and I would not have been able to do that without you, and I'd like to say a special thank you to John Egan, Ashley Via Moss, uh, Yvonne Roberts, and uh, Frank DeChico, Darwan Bouvet, uh, and Carl Engelke. Thank you so much for helping us get through some tough years. And also to uh, Joe Grace, who was just a fountain of information for us. So thank you all very, very much. And uh, a special thanks also to my favorite frenemy, Doug Smith from Verizon. Uh, again, uh, we were on opposite sides, but we always like being on the same side of issue, and it's been a pleasure 
uh, working with you, Doug. Thank you. Um, years ago, my sisters, you know, were very close. Not not everybody is here. This is about one ninth of my family, one tenth of my family. Uh, but we all used we used to say, "Oh, you, you can't die before me. I can't imagine living without you. You you got to die first because I, I just can't live without you." Uh, we really do love each other, uh, and that's the way I feel about my dear buddy Ed McBride. I said, "Ed, I love you." <laughs> Um, so I, I, in taking that, uh, that vein from what I said about my sisters, I had to leave before Ed McBride retired because I couldn't work without him. So Ed, thank you again and thank you for putting all this together. Um, and I, I'd like to also thank my uh, Judge Lord who's deceased, one of my best professors ever, learned so much from him, and my former boss Ed Rendell. Without those gentlemen I would not be here today, so thank you. And then finally I would like to thank God for my family. Uh, my father here is a retired Philadelphia police officer. and. <laughs> And just uh, have the utmost respect for him. And while we were going through the franchise last year, my father was undergoing triple bypass over at Jefferson at the end of October. I call him in December. He, he went through rehab. All my brothers and sisters helped him get back on his feet. So six weeks later, I call him. I said, oh, Dad, you sound raspy. And he said, oh, well, a woman at the gym said she had the same problem. And this is like December 6th. And I said, well, what do you mean a woman at the gym? Said, I, I said, where did you see the woman at the gym? He goes, at the gym. So he was back working out December 6th after triple bypass. So he's my hero. So if you wonder where I get my stubbornness, here it is, my father. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, I would like to thank my best friends, uh, my sister Denise, Patty, my brother Larry, my brother Joe, Michael, my sister-in-law, another Kathleen Sullivan. Uh, she was Kathleen Quinn, but married my brother. So uh, my brother Michael and my uh, Liam and Erica and the rest of my family who couldn't join us today. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Council will stay in ease. We're going to bring everybody up front.
예. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and we're going to get. Uh, we will move to communications. The chair requested the sergeant of arms delivers the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk. Mr. Decker, please read those messages. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, I am pleased to advise you that on June 7, 2016, I signed the following bills, which were passed by Council at its session on May 26, 2016. Bill number 160072 and Bill number 160110A. And I am transmitting for the consideration of your honorable body a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the American Street Industrial Corridor urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 1316 Germantown Avenue and 1363 through 65 Germantown Avenue. And a resolution initiating action to establish a neighborhood improvement district consisting of a parcel located at the northeast corner of 15th Street and Chestnut Street, commonly known as 1441 Chestnut Street, to be known as the Headquarter Hotel Neighborhood Improvement District. And a resolution approving the grant of an easement for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the West Parkside urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 1718 through 26 North 52nd Street and a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the West Parkside urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 1701 through 17 North 52nd Street, 1702 North 15, 52nd Street, 1706 through 10 North 52nd Street, 1712 through 16 North 52nd Street, 1719 through 29 North 52nd Street, 1718 North Creighton Street, 1722 through 24 North Creighton Street, 5216 Parkside Avenue, 5218 through 20 Parkside Avenue, 50 through 5222 through 34 Parkside Avenue, and 5238 Parkside Avenue. And a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the West Philadelphia Redevelopment Area, identified by house number and street address as 4635 through 37 West Gerard Avenue. And a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the 45th, 44th and Aspen urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 756 Brooklyn Street. And a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the 44th and Aspen urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 753 Brooklyn Street and 4206 through 08 Lancaster Avenue. And a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the University City Unit number 3 urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 3500 Lancaster Avenue. And an ordinance creating the headquarter hotel neighborhood improvement district being the area generally bounded by Ranstead Street on the north, the westernmost wall of the Ritz-Carlton Hotel on the east, 15th Street on the west, and Chestnut Street on the south, and approving the uh, approving Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development as the Neighborhood Improvement District Management Association. And an ordinance authorizing the bond committee to sell bonds at public or private negotiated sale to provide funds toward various capital municipal purposes, providing for appropriations to the Sinking Fund Commission for the payment for such bonds, authorizing agreements to provide credit or payment or liquidity sources for the bonds in connection with issuance of the bonds, and certain other actions. 
and an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades on a portion of city plan number 187 by striking from the city plan and vacating the legally open portion of Edgemont Street from Butler Street to a point approximately 377 feet northeastwardly therefrom, all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Those messages will be printed in today's journal. Do you have any additional communications? I have none, Mr. President. Thank you very much. The next order of business is introduction of bills and resolutions, and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning. I'll offer one bill this morning. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance amending Chapter 6800 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Lead Paint Disclosure to require, as a condition of licensing family child daycare facilities built before March 1978, that such facilities be certified as lead safe or lead free, and amending Section B425 of the Code entitled Family Child Daycare Facilities and Section F409 of the Code entitled Family Child Daycare Facilities to make conforming changes. That bill will be referred to committee. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I introduce three non-privileged resolutions and two bills, one of which is on your behalf. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. An ordinance authorizing the bond committee to sell bonds at public or private negotiated sale to provide funds toward various capital municipal purposes, providing for appropriations to the sinking fund commission for the payment of such bonds, authorizing agreements to provide credit or payment of liquidity sources for the bonds. Bill will be referred to committee. And an ordinance officially naming and designating the park and playground area located on 61st in Baltimore in the city of Philadelphia as Robert Wilson III Park. Referred to committee. And a non privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the 44th and Aspen urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 756 Brooklyn Street. Next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the University City Unit 3 urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 3500 Lancaster Avenue. Next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the 44th and Aspen urban renewal area identified by house number and street addresses as 753 Brooklyn Street and 4206 through 08. Lancaster Avenue. The next week's final pass is calendar. The chair now recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. On your behalf, I offer one bill and four resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance establishing a neighborhood improvement district consisting of a parcel located at the northeast corner of 15th Street and Chestnut Street, commonly known as 1441 Chestnut Street, to be known as the Headquarter Hotel Neighborhood Improvement District, designating Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development to serve as a Neighborhood Improvement District Management Association for the district. Further the committee. And a non privileged resolution initiating action to establish a neighborhood improvement district consisting of a parcel located at the northeast corner of 15th Street and Chestnut Street, commonly known as 1441 Chestnut Street, to be known as the Headquarter Hotel Neighborhood Improvement District. And that will be referred to committee. All right. Let the record reflect. Let the record reflect that the resolution just read by the chief clerk will be on next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the American Street Industrial Corridor urban renewal area identified by house numbers. And street addresses as 1361 Germantown Avenue and 1363 through 65 Germantown Avenue. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the Cecil B. Moore Avenue urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 1800 Cecil B. Moore Avenue and 1804 Cecil B. Moore Avenue. Next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fees simple title to search city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon, situated in the 47th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's final passes calendar. 
And the chair recognizes Councilman Heaton. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council President. Uh, today I have three ordinances and two resolutions. One resolution co-introduced by Councilman Jones, Councilwoman Sanchez, and Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance prohibiting through truck traffic on the 2800 block of Orthodox Street and the 2800 block of Headley Street from Richmond Street to Bath Street and establishing a truck route on Lewis Street between Richmond Street and Delaware Avenue. For the committee. And an ordinance establishing a no truck parking regulation on both sides of Edmund Street from Bly Avenue to Cotman Avenue. For the committee. And an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades on a portion of city, pl city plan number 187 by striking from the city plan and vacating the legally open portion of Edgemont Street from Butler Street to a point approximately 377 feet northeastwardly therefrom. For the committee. And a non privilege resolution. A privilege resolution authorizing the City Council Joint Committees on Licenses and Inspections and Public Safety to hold hearings on the issue of negligent landlords, property manager, foreclosed vacant residential properties, problem rental properties, and their effects on the surrounding community, and in furtherance of such investigation, authorizing the issuance of subpoenas to compel the attendance of witnesses and the production of documents to the full extent authorized under Section 2401 of the Home Rule Charter. And I'll be on this week's final pass calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Land Bank deeds conveying title to certain properties located in the 6th Council Manic District. This week's, I'm sorry, next week's final pass is calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I have 10 resolutions, three co-sponsored by Blondo Reynolds-Brown, Councilwoman. Thank Albany. you, Councilman. A privileged resolution recognizing and honoring the Winfield Residents Association for their diligent work in employing and mentoring youths during the summer. This week's final pass is calendar. And a privileged resolution recognizing and honoring the Overbrook Park Civic Association for their diligent work in employing youths during the summer. This week's final pass is calendar. And a non-privileged resolution also naming the 3,000 block of Ringgold Street as John Brickhouse Way. This week's final pass is calendar. You're, you're going to have a busy summer, Councilman. And a non privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the West Philadelphia redevelopment area identified by house number and street address as 4635 through 37 West Gerard Avenue. This week's final pass is calendar. And a non-privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the West Parkside urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 1701 through 17 North 52nd Street, 1702 North 52nd Street, 1706 through 1710 North 52nd Street, 1712 through 16 North 52nd Street, 1719 through 29 North 52nd Street, 1718 North Creighton Street, 1722 through 24 North Creighton Street, 5216 Parkside Avenue, 5218 through 20 Parkside Avenue, Avenue, 5222 through 5234 Parkside Avenue, and 5238 Parkside Avenue. Chair, recognize Councilman Jones. Yeah, I just wanted to speak on the two resolutions honoring the Winfield Residents Association and Overbook Park. And the reason why Councilwoman Reynolds Brown and I decided to recognize them was they took an initiative that we talked about and brought it into reality. Um, these areas have great big giant lawns um, and the association chipped in, bought some um, lawn care equipment, uh, started these young people out and lo and behold what seemingly were kids that were too occupied with electronic games, uh, uh, handheld uh, devices, iPhones, smartphones, they got up, they went out and they started learning how to make money they had to, and this was a job club where they get stipends, not salaries, but they had to tell them, no, you can't cut grass at night. These kids did not want to go in. They, they, they got that entrepreneurial kind of work ethic going, and I encourage all of my civic associations that if we can't find kids summer jobs, let's create them. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. The resolution just read by the chief clerk will be on next week's final passage calendar. 
and a non-privileged resolution approving the grant of an easement for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the West Parkside urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 1718 through 1726 North 52nd Street. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. And a resolution appointing Mark C. Reed to the Board of Directors of the City Avenue Special Services District. And a resolution appointing Howard Wurzak to the Board of Directors of the City Avenue Special Services District. And a resolution appointing Jeffrey B. Goldstone to the Board of Directors of the Center of the City Avenue Special Services District. And a resolution appointing Kevin McMichaels to the Board of Directors of the City Avenue Special Services District. Those resolutions just read by the Chief Clerk will be referred to committee. And the Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Council President. I have two You're bills welcome. and two privileged resolutions. Thank you, Council President. You're welcome. An ordinance authorizing John Ribas of South 17th Street to construct, own, and maintain metal railing encroachments at 1002 through 16 South 17th Street. Further the committee. And an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce on behalf of the city to acquire approximately 20.8 acres of land known as Parcel G, bounded by Island, by Island and Bartram Avenues and I-95, together with all improvements thereon. Refer to committee. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration. Deeds conveying conditional fees, simple title to the city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the 36th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. And I'll be on next week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration. Deeds conveying conditional fees, simple title to the city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the 36th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's final pass is calendar, and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Council President. I have Welcome. one resolution on your behalf and one resolution co-sponsored by Councilwoman uh, Gim Greenlee and Johnson, and I'd like to be recognized after the title of the bill has been read. Thank you, Councilwoman. A privileged resolution authorizing the Committee on Fiscal Stability and Intergovernmental Cooperation to hold hearings regarding the City's operating budget for fiscal 2017 to examine, analyze, and provide oversight on the financial condition of the City of Philadelphia. And that will be on this week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution calling upon the City of Philadelphia to exhaust all reasonably necessary steps to ensure that PMC Property Group reaffirms and satisfies its con contractual and moral obligation to set aside on-site units of affordable housing at 1 Water Street, the expected performance of which conditioned the City's decision to grant PMC a substantial density bonus permitting construction of additional floors and units therein all under certain conditions set forth by the city's mixed income housing program and further calling upon PMC to apologize to the citizens of Philadelphia for evading affordable housing obligations while the city faces an affordable housing crisis. Chair recognize Councilwoman McEwen Ascensor. Thank you, Council President. Excited, hopeful, when PM PMC came to the city and signed a lucrative deal to utilize our density bonus to create an affordable set aside in their resort-like one water street apartment building on the Delaware River. Imagine poor working class folks having access and the ability to live at such a prominent address. To our disappointment, um, Igna Saffron uh, called it a bait and switch after building um, utilizing these, these uh, density bonus, they've come back and said, it is a financial hardship and we will no longer meet our contractual obligation and more importantly, our moral obligation. As been highlighted many times in this council, Philadelphia is one of the major cities in deep poverty. We have a high home ownership rate, but a declining one. And we have articulated time and time again in this council our renewed commitment to preservation, affordability, and accessibility throughout the city. If you're charging $5,500 per month, how could it not be financially feasible to live up to your obligation? 
So I want to thank Mayor uh, Kenny for very quickly responding to this, Commissioner Perry, and, and all of the city officials, and say we're not letting them get away with a commercial piece, an art piece. We were excited. This was about setting the stage that, that working class people can live in any part of the city of Philadelphia that they choose to, and the government would do whatever was possible to ensure diversity and mixed income communities throughout the city. So I look forward to con our continued work here in City Council as we continue to re-examine and expand our inclusionary housing uh, policies in the city of Philadelphia. Shame on you, PMC. You're not going to get away with it. This is too important to the future of the city of Philadelphia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. And that resolution will be on next week's final passes calendar. The chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I have one privileged resolution co-sponsored uh, with Council Members Tonberger, Parker, Bass, Gim, and Squilla. Thank you, Councilman. A privileged resolution recognizing June 2016 as Disability Pride Month in the City of Philadelphia. Thank you. That will be on this week's final passes calendar. The chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilwoman. The chair recognizes Councilman Don. Morning, Council President. I have one privileged resolution today, co sponsored by Councilman Jones and all members of Council. Thank you, Councilman. A privileged resolution recognizing and honoring the life of the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, who passed away Friday, June 3rd, 2016, at the age of 74, after a 32-year battle with Parkinson's disease. And that resolution will be on this week's final passes calendar. Chair recognize Councilwoman Gim. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I have one privileged resolution sponsored by Council Members Johnson, Blackwell, Heenan, Quinones Sanchez, Bass, Reynolds, Brown, and Green, and one bill, and I'd like to be recognized when the title of the bill is read in. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance amending Section A703.1 of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code entitled Special Certificate of Inspection to require certification of water quality as a condition of occupancy for certain buildings used for education. That bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Gim. Thank you very much, Mr. President. This bill was sponsored by all the women of council as well as council members Johnson, uh, Dom, and Green, and is the first of a series of package of bills that takes a look at how the city can improve and address water safety and testing. Um, earlier this week, the women of council held a press conference that talked about what it meant to elevate the conversation around water safety in our city. Um, I want to especially acknowledge the leadership of council members Reynolds Brown and Blackwell who've led on this issue for so long and to thank my co-chair uh, Councilwoman Cindy Bass who held a wonderful set of hearings on understanding um, water safety in our city. And we left the hearing knowing that Philadelphians deserve answers and protections when it comes to the issue of lead poisoning. There should be no question about the safety of our schools and child care centers. We should know that renters and home buyers should know what risks they face and that all of our residents have clear paths to pathways to remediation. Ever since the Flint water crisis has happened, we have put renewed focus on the irreparable harm that lead poisoning can cause, especially in young children. And what we're trying to do now is take a 50-year-old conversation like lead poisoning and re-energize re that and reinvigorate it with a renewed vig vigilance and attention um, where it matters and when it matters. Um, and just very quickly, I'd like to say that in January, in January of 2016 of this year, a national publication came out talking about Philadelphia and asking the question, is Philadelphia worse than Flint? And today, the headline on uh, that same national pub publication says that Philadelphia is leading the way on water safety and testing. And I'd like to thank all the members of council for helping lead us through that and talk, show um, that we can really change 
not only the circumstances for our young people and for our city residents, but we can change the national dialogue about how we look at cities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilwoman. And a non resolution condemning the racist, sexist, xenophobic, and anti-American values that have been espoused by Donald Trump during his bid for the United States presidency, which are at odds with the deeply held values of the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, and sisterly affection. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> we were wondering whether that could be a privileged resolution. Right. That's a that, would, uh, you're gonna, that would be on next week's final passes calendar. Thank you. That's it. Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Good afternoon, Council President and colleagues. I have two privi privileged resolutions uh, co-sponsored by uh, Councilwoman Parker and Councilman Dom, and also co-sponsored by Councilman Green, Councilwoman Parker, Councilman Dom, and Councilwoman Gim. Thank you very much, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. A privilege resolution honoring and recognizing Philadelphia Business Journal and their 2016 40 Under 40 class. That will be on this week's final passes calendar. And a privilege resolution authorizing the Committee on Aging to conduct public hearings regarding financial abuse of senior citizens in Philadelphia. And that will also be in this week's final passes calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. A non privileged resolution reappointing John Connors to the Board of Directors of the Center City District, and a non privileged resolution appointing Jeff Duvuno to the Board of Directors of the Center City District, and a re non privileged resolution reappointing Ronald Boland to the Board of Directors of the Center City District, and a non privileged resolution appointing Darrell Adams to the Board of Directors of the Center City District, and a non privileged resolution appointing Joseph Caradino to the Board of Directors of the Center City District, and a non privileged resolution appointing Tom Zaff to the Board of Directors of the Center City District. Those six resolutions just read by the Chief Clerk will be referred to committee. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer two non privileged resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. A non privileged resolution nominating 25 individuals for consideration by the mayor as appointees to the Commission on Parks and Recreation. Thank you. They will be on next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fees, simple title to search sitting on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the 13th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. We'll also be on next week's final passes calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. I uh, offer uh, two privileged resolutions, three non privileged, and uh, the various uh, Resolutions were co-sponsored by Council Members Jones, Reynolds, Brown, Green, Gim, Bass, and Taubenberger. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. A privilege resolution authorizing the Public Health and Human Services Committee to hold hearings on obtaining life-saving naloxone at minimal cost and distributing it most effectively. That will be on this week's final passes calendar. And a privileged resolution author authorizing public hearings to evaluate more cost efficient and effective methods for the City of Philadelphia to address its perennial pothole problem. And that will be on this week's final passes calendar. 
And that concludes our And a privilege resolution. And a privilege resolution commemorating the 58th anniversary of the death of Inho O oh and the response by his parents offering forgiveness to the teenage murderers requesting that the juveniles receive the most generous treatment possible allowed by law and establishing a fund to be used for their religious, educational, vocational, and social guidance. And that will be on this week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution urging the United States House of Representatives to pass House Resolution 210 entitled Affirming and Recognizing the Khmer, Loatian, Hmong, and Montagnard Freedom Fighters and the people of Cambodia and Laos for their support and defense of the United States Armed Forces and Freedom in Southeast Asia. That will be on next week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution requesting the city controller to conduct an audit of the Philadelphia Parking Authority's policies and procedures on the administration of its operations in the city of Philadelphia. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. That's it. And that concludes our introduction of bills and resolutions. Next order of business is reports from the committee, and the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan for a report from the Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee of the Whole reports three, three bills and six resolutions with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read the report. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia. The Committee of the Whole, to which is referred Bill Number 160-172, entitled an ordinance adopting the operating budget for fiscal year 2017, and Bill Number 160-176, entitled an ordinance amending Title 19 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Finance, Taxes, and Collections, by adding a new chapter, 194100, entitled Sugar, Sweet, and Beverage Tax. And Bill Number 160-552, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 192600 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Business Income and Receipts Taxes, by creating a tax credit to encourage certain merchants to provide healthy beverage alternatives in their stores. And Resolution Number 160583, entitled a resolution appointing Daniel Connor to the Board of Directors for the Germantown Special Services District. And Resolution Number 160584, entitled a resolution appointing Trepetta Mason to the Board of Directors for the Germantown Special Services District. And a resolution number 160585 entitled a resolution appointing Supreme Dow to the Board of Directors for the Spe Germantown Special Services District. And resolution number 160586 entitled a resolution appointing Patrick W. Jones to the Board of Directors for the Germantown Special Services District. And resolution number 160587 entitled a resolution appointing Byron Davis to the Board of Directors for the Germantown Special Services District. And resolution number 160588 entitled a resolution appointing Julie Baranuskas to the Board of Directors for the Germantown Special Services District. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills and resolutions to Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. The Chair again recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of Council be suspended as to permit first reading of this day bill numbers 160172, 160176, and 160552. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of Council be suspended. So as a remit, first reading this day of bills number 160, 172, 160, 176, and 160552. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Resolutions number 160583, 160584, 160585, 160586, 160587, and 160588 will be placed on our final passes calendar at our next session of council. Chair now recognizes Councilman Greenlee for a report from the Committee on Rules. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Rules reports 21 bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Rules, which is referred Bill Number 160223, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Ford Road, Shimano Drive, Belmont Avenue, and Monument Road. And Bill Number 160272, entitled an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by amending Section 14905 entitled Non Accessory Signs by adding a new subsection to permit one advertising sign with certain conditions within the area bounded by McGee Avenue Extended, the Delaware River, Unruh Avenue, and New State Road. 
and bill number 160275 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by State Road, the Delaware Expressway, I-95, and Ashburner Street. And Bill number 160276, entitled an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Zoning and Planning, by amending Section 14905, entitled Non-Accessory Signs, by adding a new subsection to permit one advertising sign with certain conditions within the area bounded by State Road, the Delaware Expressway, I-95, and Ashburner Street. And Bill number 160299, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia Zoning Maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Ridge Avenue, Hermit Street, Henry Avenue, and Lincoln Drive. And Bill number 160300 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Carpenter Street, Broad Street, Washington Avenue, and 15th Street. And Bill number 160302 entitled an ordinance amending section 14518 of the Philadelphia Code entitled WWA West Washington Avenue Overlay District by adding additional standards and making related changes. And Bill number 160327 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Roosevelt Boulevard, Holm Avenue, Fairfield Street, Sally Avenue, Farnsworth Street, Fuller Street, Revere Street, Ron Street, Farnsworth Street, Loney Street, Lister Street, Cornwall Street, Revere Street, Ryan Avenue, and Roosevelt Boulevard. And Bill number 160328 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Roosevelt Boulevard, North Ferry Road, Kelly Drive, Lincoln Drive, Gypsy Lane, Schoolhouse Lane, Crescent Street, Indian Queen Lane, and Conrad Street. And Bill number 160330 entitled an ordinance amending section 14503 of the Philadelphia Code entitled NCA, Neighborhood Commercial Overlay District, by amending the subsection entitled East Falls Neighborhood. And Bill number 160335, entitled an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Zoning and Planning, by revising Chapter 14500, entitled Overlay Zoning Districts, with respect to the North Delaware Avenue Neighborhood Commercial Area Overlay District. And Bill number 160336, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia Zoning Maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Lehigh Avenue, Trenton Avenue, Norris Street, Front Street, Coral Street, Boston Street, Emerald Street, Haggard Street, and Kensington Avenue. And Bill number 160369, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Elkin Street on the Avenue, 20th Street, Belfield Avenue, and Worcester Street. And Bill number 160512, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Sarah Street, Wildy Street, Shocker Maxon Street, and the Delaware Expressway. And Bill number 160515, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Parkside Avenue, Belmont Avenue, Girard Avenue, Marion Avenue, and 52nd Street. And Bill number 160516, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Henry Avenue, Coulter Street, Schoolhouse Lane, Wissahickon Avenue, and Lincoln Drive, and certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Henry Avenue, Warden Drive, Calumet Street, Merrick Street, Gypsy Lane, and Schoolhouse Lane, further to adopt the master plan for Philadelphia University and approving various construction projects. And Bill number 160518, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Grace Ferry Avenue, Kimball Street, 25th Street, and Washington Avenue. And Bill number 160521, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Front Street, Coral Street, Boston Street, and Emerald Street, Haggard Street, and Kensington Avenue. And Bill number 160522 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by East Wing Hocking Street, Adams Avenue, Bristol Street Extended, and the Frankfurt Creek. And Bill number 160525 entitled an ordinance to amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code and Title Zoning and Planning by revising requirements for preliminary plat approval. And Bill number 160526 entitled an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code and Title Zoning and Planning, including by amending Chapter 14500 entitled Overlay Zoning Districts by mon modifying the boundaries of the Old City Residential District area of the Center City Overlay District and by revising parking and loading requirements for the East Callahill Overlay District. Respectfully reports that it's considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair again recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of 21 bills that were just read into the record. Second. Thank you. 
It's been moved to Friday second that the rules of council be suspended. So as I've been first reading this days of the 21 bills just reported from the committee and read by the clerk. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed in our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell for a report from the Committee of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Finance reports out seven bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Ms. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Finance, which is referred bill number 160402, entitled an ordinance approving the fiscal year 2017 capital budget providing for expenditures for the capital purposes of the Philadelphia Gas Works. And bill number 160470, entitled an ordinance amending the ordinance approved July 12, 1968, as last amendment of June 12, 2014, relating to pension benefits for employees working on behalf of the Philadelphia Gas Works by revising the Philadelphia Gas Works pension plan to incorporate amendments thereto with respect to death benefits for certain plan participants. And bill number 160471 entitled an ordinance amending chapter 191400 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Realty Transfer Tax by revising the rate of the tax. And bill number 160510 entitled an ordinance authorizing the city treasurer on behalf of the city to enter into an amendment agreement with Wells Fargo Bank for provision of payroll banking services to the city. And bill number 160511 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Director of Planning and Development on behalf of the city to file applications with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for a community development block grant to participate in the Home Investment Partnership Program and the Emergency Solutions Grant Program and for Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS Grant and to file applications with the Commonwealth to obtain grants under the Act of April 12, 1956 as amended to prevent and eliminate blight. And Bill Number 160523 entitled an ordinance providing for an exemption from charges relating to stormwater management and disposal, disposal for community gardens operated for community benefit and producing food or non-food crops. And Bill Number 160551 entitled an ordinance amending Section 10, 1002 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sheriff's Fees by revising fees, commissions, and reimbursements for various functions and services performed by the Sheriff and making technical changes. Respectful reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. The Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of Council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of Bill Numbers 160402, 160470, 160471, 160510, 150511, 160523 and 160551. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 160, 402, 160470, 160471, 160510, 150511, 160523, and 160551. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez for a report from the Committee of Appropriations. Thank you, Council President. The Committee on Appropriations reports one bill with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Appropriations, to which is referred Bill Number 160332, entitled an ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for fiscal year 2016 from the Grants Revenue Fund, the Director of Finance Provision for Other Grants, to the General Fund, the Department of Streets, the Fire Department, the Department of Public Property, the Director of Finance, the Procurement Department, the Law Department, and the District Attorney. Respectfully Chair. reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bill to Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman McKeon Sanchez. Thank you, Council President. I move that the rules of Council be suspended as to permit first reading this day of Bill Number 160332. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of Council be suspended. So I have to permit first reading this day of Bills Number 160332. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. These bills will, this bill will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilman Heenan for a report from the Committee of Public Property and Public Works. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee of Public Property and Public Work reports out 13 bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. 
Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on Public Property and Public Works, to which is referred Bill Number 160334, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to convey to the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development all or part of a parcel of land located in the area bounded by Buttonwood Street, North 10th Street, Hamilton Street, Ridge Avenue, and North 11th Street for further conveyance. And Bill Number 160366, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the city to lease from the uh, lease to the Rosemary Montagno Senior Center. The premise is located at 12601 Townsend Road. And Bill Number 160399, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to acquire a bridge that crosses the Schuylkill River below Grace Ferry Bridge, and to acquire rights or property interests in connection with supports for the bridge and its abutments. And Bill Number 160406, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to enter into an amendment to a sublease agreement with the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development for the use by the city of premises located at 1101 Market Street. And Bill Number 160463, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce to enter into an agreement to lease and, and purchase from Tinicum Township an approximately 21-acre parcel of land adjacent to Philadelphia International Airport. And Bill Number 160464 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce to acquire approximately 8.5 acres of Hog Island Road from Tinicum Township together with all improvements thereon. And Bill Number 160519 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to grant to the owner of 1140R South 15th Street an easement across the property of a certain parcel of land known as 1129 South Sydenham Street. And Bill Number 160553 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to convey to the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development a parcel of land commonly known as 3033 West Glenwood Avenue for further conveyance. And Bill Number 160554 entitled an ordinance authorizing an ordinance approving a lease agreement between Philadelphia Gas Works by Philadelphia Facilities Management Corporation in its capacity as operator and manager of the Gas Works and Del Val Realty Group for Del Val Realty Group's use of a certain five acre parcel and a certain 3.14 acre parcel located near Delaware Avenue and Tioga Street. And Bill Number 160560 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce to acquire approximately one acre of land known as Parcel 8A located in Tinicum Township at Tinicum Island Road Rear and bounded by Philadelphia International Airport to the south, east, and west sides, together with all improvements thereon. And Bill Number 160561 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce to acquire an, an approximately two acre property known as 8360. Enterprise Avenue, together with all improvements thereon, and removing a certain title exception with respect thereto. And Bill Number 160562 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce to acquire approximately 1.2 acres of land known as Parcel T, located at the northeast corner of Island and Escort Avenues, together with all improvements thereon. And Bill Number 160563 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce to acquire land known as the Orange Line in Tinicum Township and Philadelphia in the vicinity of Philadelphia International Airport, together with all improvements thereon, all under certain terms and conditions. Respect for reports that has considered the same and returns the attached bills to Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Chair, again, recognize this Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of Council be suspended. <coughs> So as to permit first reading of this day of the 13 bills that were just read into the record. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended. So as to permit first reading this day of bills number 160334, 160366, 160399, 160406, 160463, 160464, 160519, 160553, 160554, 160560, 160561, 160562, and 1606. Five six three. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. These bills will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. The chair now recognizes Councilman Squilla for a report from the Committee on Streets and Services. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Streets and Services reports 21 bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Streets and Services, to which is a verb, Bill Number 160224, entitled an ordinance authorizing the installation of all-way stop signs at the intersection of Boone Street and DuPont Street. 
And Bill Number 160274, entitled an ordinance amending Section 12701 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Bicycle Lanes, by authorizing the Department of Streets to designate buffered bicycle lanes in each direction on Tyson Avenue from Roosevelt Boulevard to Frankfurt Avenue. And Bill Number 160363, entitled an ordinance amending Section 2 of an ordinance, Bill Number 090120, approved April 15, 2009, entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines of grades on a portion of City Plan Numbers 107 and 130, by striking from the City Plan and vacating the legally open portions of 47th Street from Fairmont Avenue to Brown Street by extending the period for compliance with the terms and conditions stated therein. And Bill Number 160368 entitled an ordinance legalizing an existing external steel stairs to the second floor of 2654 South Camac Street. And Bill Number 160397 entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades on a portion of City Plan Number 120 by striking from the City Plan and vacating Lambert Street from Woodstock Street each from Jefferson Street to Redner Street. And Bill Number 160403 entitled an ordinance establishing parking regulations in the vicinity of 13th Street and Wharton Street and Clymer Street and 12th Street, 13th Street and Bainbridge Street, and 13th Street and Fitzwater Street. And Bill Number 160404 entitled an ordinance amending Section 9205 of the Philadelphia Code on Title Sidewalk Sales by prohibiting vending on both sides of Allegheny Avenue between Kensington Avenue and Bath Street. And Bill Number 160405 entitled an ordinance amending Section 9205 of the Philadelphia Code on Title Sidewalk Sales by prohibit prohibiting vending on both sides of Castor Avenue between Glenwood Avenue and Aramingo Avenue on both sides of Amber Street between Tioga Street and Castor Avenue, on both sides of Butler Street between Frankfurt Avenue and Aramingo Avenue, and on both sides of Frankfurt Avenue between Venango Street and Butler Street. And Bill Number 160459 entitled an ordinance authorizing Mulherrin Partners to install, own, and maintain an open-air sidewalk cafe at 1355 Front Street. And Bill Number 160461 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority to construct, own, and maintain digital outdoor advertising signs encroaching on the public right of way at various subway, elevated train, and rail entrances in the city. And Bill Number 160513 entitled an ordinance amending Section 9.212 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Newsstands by revising the requirements for sales from newsstands by permitting newsstands to sell additional products and services. <laughs> And Bill Number 160520 entitled an ordinance authorizing Philadelphia License Number One to install, own, and maintain an open air sidewalk cafe at 1200 South 21st Street. And Bill Number 160527 entitled an ordinance authorizing Kubio Ben Ayed to install, own, and maintain an open air sidewalk cafe at 906 Christian Street. And Bill Number 160528 entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines of grades on a portion of City Plan Number 27S by striking from the city plan and vacating Shunk Street from Swanson Street to Vandalia Street. And Bill Number 160555 entitled an ordinance authorizing the opening of Delaware Avenue from Orthodox Street to Buckia Street and the opening of the unopened and widened portions of Buckia Street from Richmond Street to the southeasterly right of way line of the Philadelphia Beltline Railroad. And Bill Number 160556 entitled an ordinance authorizing the paving of Delaware Avenue from Orthodox to, Bu to Buckia Street and Buckia Street from Delaware Avenue to Bath Street. And Bill Number 160558 entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines of grades on a portion of City Plan Numbers 305 and 306 by placing on the City Plan Delaware Avenue from Orthodox Street to Buckia Street. And Bill Number 160559 entitled an ordinance authorizing East Falls Development Corporation to construct, own, and maintain various right-of-way encroachments at 4168 Ridge Avenue. And Bill Number 160564 entitled an ordinance establishing a no tractor trailer parking regulation on both sides of North 5th Street from Spencer Street to Godfrey Avenue. And Bill Number 160565 entitled an ordinance amending Section 2 of an ordinance, Bill Number 140280 approved May 19, 2014, entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades on a portion of City Plan Number 271 by striking from the City Plan and vacating Hope Street from Laurel Street to Pollard Street by extending the period for compliance with the terms and conditions stated therein. And Bill Number 160566, entitled an ordinance amending Section 9 of an ordinance, Bill Number 150377, approved June 18, 2015, entitled an ordinance authorizing the construction, ownership, and maintenance of various encroachments into the right-of-way of Market Street, Filbert Street, 11th Street, 10th Street, 9th Street, and 8th Street, and authorizing the assignment of certain rights with respect to an overhead pedestrian bridge, bridge above Phil Filbert Street, west of the house line of 9th Street, to be assigned, all under certain terms and conditions, by further authorizing the Streets Department to approve encroachments consistent with plans approved by the Philadelphia City Planning Commission and the City of Philadelphia Art Commission. Respectfully reports that it's considered the same and returns the attached bills to Council 
with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair again recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first reading this day of the 21 <coughs> bills that were just read into the record. Thank you. The bill moved properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of the 21 bills that were just read into the record by the clerk. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. These bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Jonas Sanchez for a report from the Committee on License and Inspection. Thank you, Council President. The Committee on Licenses and Inspection reports eight bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Licenses and Inspections, which is referred to Bill Number 160115, entitled an ordinance amending Title IX of the Philadelphia Code entitled Regulation of Businesses, Trades, and Professions. By creating a new chapter to hold business owners responsible for nuisance behavior occurring on the business premises and within the immediate vicinity of the business, to provide for enforcement and penalties, and to provide for business owner meetings with registered community organizations with respect to certain appeals. And Bill Number 160249 entitled an ordinance amending Section 93908 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Notification of License Obligation by adding a requirement for the city to provide an explanation of the license requirements for break vacant properties. And Bill Number 160303 entitled an ordinance amending Section 9703 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Special Assembly Occupancies by further providing for types of activity <coughs> to be regulated and by altering the fees and requirements for a special assembly occupancy license. And Bill Number 160365 entitled an ordinance amending subcodes A and PM of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code, the Philadelphia Administrative Code, and the Philadelphia Property Maintenance Code by establishing a separate offense for certain chronic, non compliant violators of the Property Maintenance Code. And Bill Number 160462 entitled an ordinance amending subcode A, subcode F, and subcode PM of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code by adding certain provisions related to maintenance and inspection of fire escapes. And Bill Number 160468 entitled an ordinance amending Title IV, the Philadelphia Building Construction and Occupancy Code, Subcode A, the Philadelphia Administrative Code of the Philadelphia Code, by revising signage requirements relating to construction and demolition projects. And Bill Number 160469 entitled an ordinance amending Title IV, the Philadelphia Building Construction and Occupancy Code, Subcode A, the Philadelphia Administrative Code of the Philadelphia Code, by revising requirements relating to construction and demolition projects, including the expiration of permits all under certain terms and conditions. Respectful reports that it's considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. And bill, num bill number 160472 entitled an ordinance amending subcode PM of the Philadelphia Code, the Philadelphia Property Maintenance Code, by adding certain provisions relating to drinking facilities in schools. Respectful reports that it's considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. The chair again recognizes Councilwoman Fiona Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Rules of Council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 160115, 160249, 160303, 160365, 160462, 160468, 160469, and 160472. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the Rules of Council be suspended so as to permit reading, first reading this day. <clears throat> Excuse me, a bill number 160115, 160249, 160303, 160365, 160462, and 160468, 160469, and 160472. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Chair and I recognize this Councilwoman Parker for a report from the Committee of Labor and Civil Service. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Labor and Civil Service reports one bill with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilwoman. Ms. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Labor and Civil Service, to which is referred Bill Number 160278, entitled An Ordinance Amending Section 171305 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Compensation Required to be Paid to Employees, to revise the compensation and benefits required to be provided in connection with application of the Philadelphia 21st Century Minimum Wage Standard, all under certain terms and conditions. Respectful reports that it is considered the same, and returns the attached bill to Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 160278. 
Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended. So I have to bring me a first reading this day of bills number 160278. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, the ayes have. And this bill will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes this councilwoman Bass for a report from the Committee of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs reports six bills with a favorable recommendation. In addition, the committee submits a report pursuant to resolution number 160388. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs, the Witchers have heard Bill Number 160301 entitled an ordinance naming and designating addition, an addition to the Marion Anderson Recreation Center located at the corner of 17th and Fitzwater Streets, the Ryan, Ryan Howard Training Center. And Bill Number 160304 entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 15600 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Parks and Playgrounds by adding a new section requiring that all parks or playgrounds owned or controlled by the city to be more inclusive, intergenerational, and family friendly, and provide equipment and play or fitness opportunities to accommodate children and adults with special needs. And Bill Number 160458 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the City to accept, to accept title to all or a portion of the parcels of land in the area bounded by North Street, North 18th Street, Wallace Street, and North 19th Street and amending Chapter 15200 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Fairmount Park System to include such properties among the areas designated as part of the Fairmount Park System. And Bill Number 160473 entitled and ordinance authorizing the Parks and Recreation Commissioner to enter into an agreement to release and indemnify the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority in connection with access provided by SEPTA to carry out a project for improvements to JFK Plaza, also known as Love Park, at 15th and JFK Boulevard. And Bill Number 160529, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the City to, to, acquire, to accept title to all or a portion of the parcels of land commonly known as 1035 through 37 South 6th Street and 1028 through 32 South Fairhill Street, and amending Chapter 15200 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Fairmount Park System to include such properties among the areas designated as part of the Fairmount Park System. And Bill Number 160557 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of, uh, of Public Property and Parks and Recreation Commissioner to sublease from the Philadelphia Municipal Authority certain land and improvements known as McArdle Playground, owned by the School District of Philadelphia. Respectful reports that is considered the same and returns the attached bill to Council with a favorable recommendation. And after conducting the required hearings pursuant to Resolution 160388, entitled a resolution authorizing Council's Committee on Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs to hold public hearings for applicants seeking nom nomination to serve on the Commission on Parks and Recreation, and further authorizing the Committee to recommend for Council's consideration nominations to be forwarded to the Mayor. Respectfully reports it has developed a list of recommended names and submits them to Council in the attached report with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 160301, 160304, 160458, 160473, 160529, and 160557. Thank you. It has been moving properly. Second, that the rules of council be suspended so as to remit first reading this day of bills number 160301, 160304, 160458, 160473, 160529, and 160557. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. These bills will be on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilman Jones for a report from the Committee of Commerce and Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Committee on Commerce and Economic Development offers four bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Commerce and Economic Development, which is referred to Bill Number 160129, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 17-1600 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Economic Opportunity Plans, by amending certain definitions, and amending Chapter 17-2000 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled First Source Jobs Policy, by designating the Economic Opportunity Review Committee to oversee implementation and enforcement of the City's First Source Jobs Policy. And Bill Number 160325, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 17, 1600 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Economic Opportunity Plans, by modifying the monetary threshold triggering the requirement of an economic opportunity plan on city-funded pro projects or contracts. 
and Bill Number 160364, entitled Under Ordinance Amending Chapter 17, 1300 yeah. of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Philadelphia 21st Century Minimum Wage and Benefit Standard, to revise the benefits required to be provided in connection with application of the Philadelphia 21st Century Minimum Wage Standard. And Bill Number 160370, entitled An Ordinance Amending Title 17 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Contracts and Procurement, by adding provisions requiring the city, that the city contractors to pay subcontractors promptly and setting forth an alternative process for prompt payment, all under certain terms and conditions. Respectful of reports that it has considered the same, and returns the attached bills to Council with a favorable recommendation. The Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 160129, 160325, 160364, and 160370. Is there a second? Second. It's, it's been moved. It's been moved and property seconded that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day. A bill number is 160129, 160325, 160364, and 160370. All those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. Chair now recognizes Councilman Jones for a report from the Committee on Public Safety. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Committee on Public Safety recommends three bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Public Safety, to which is referred Bill Number 160331, entitled an ordinance amending Section 10834 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Responsibility to Avoid Possession and Discharge of Firearms by Children, by requiring safe storage of firearms and ammunition. And Bill Number 160333, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 10800 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Safety, by amending Section 10820, entitled Cutting Weapons in Public Places by excluding certain emergency personnel from the prohibition on the use and possession of cutting tools. And Bill Number 160517, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 10600 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Public Places, Prohibited Conduct, by adding a new Section 10615, entitled Disorderly Conduct and Related Defenses, to prohibit certain types of disorderly public conduct and to provide for penalties, all under certain terms and conditions. Respectfully reports it is considered the same and returns the attached bills to Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that the rules of Council be suspended as to permit first reading this day of bills number 160331, 160333, and 160517. Is there a second? <laughs> See, I'm not out there to second, so nobody's doing it. <laughs> it has been moved to property seconded that the rules of council be suspended. So it's permit first reading this day of bill numbers 160331, 160333, and 160517. All those in favor will please say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it, and these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. The next order of business is a consideration of the calendar. I note that the bills just reported from committee with suspension of rules have been deemed to have had a first reading. These bills will be placed on the second reading and final passage calendar for the next session of council. As there are no additional bills on the first reading calendar, the chair recognizes Councilman Johnson at this time for a motion regarding bill number 160302. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be susp suspended so as to permit an amendment to be offered to bill number 160302 at this time. It's been moved and saying all those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And again, the chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Council President. I would like to offer an amendment to Bill Number 160302. A copy of the, of the amendment has been circulated to all members of Council. I move the adoption of the amendment. Second. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and Bill Number 160302 has been amended. Bill Number 160302, as amended, will be placed on the final passage calendar for the next session of Council. The Chair now recognizes Councilman Jones at this time for a motion regarding Bill Number 160517. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the rules of Council be suspended 
so as to permit an amendment to be offered to bill number 160517 at this time. So moved and second. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And again, the chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. I would like to offer an amendment to, to Bill 16017, well, start again, 160517, a copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of council. I move for the adoption of the amendment. We moved and seconded before we vote. Council, Councilwoman Gim. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. And I would just like to acknowledge uh, gratitude to Councilman Jones um, for the amendment that was added. Uh, this was an important bill that takes a look at decriminalizing aspects of our, uh, you know, of our of our code that should not in any way be criminalized. However, it was extremely important that an amendment be added that uh, ex has explicit protection rights under disorderly conduct for First Amendment rights. And as we head into a major event, such as the Democratic National Convention, we want those who come to our city to understand that this city will stand strong for the First Amendment rights of individuals who wish to express concerns or their issues or concerns as, as we move forward into this. So thank you, Councilman Jones, and I support the amendment. Thank you. Chair, recognize Councilman O. Did you much? Uh, um, I'd like to make a request that I be excused and recorded as voting aye on all bills and resolutions. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councilman. A leave shall be granted. Thank you. Council, I believe that there was a motion uh, made for your amendment, and we did not have a vote on that, that amendment. Do we have a second? We got a second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. And Bill number 160517 has been amended. Bill number 160517, as amended, will be placed on the final passage calendar in our next session of council. Right, thank you. The chair now recognizes Councilman Heenan for the purpose of calling up resolutions and bills on the second reading and final passage calendars. Thank you, Mr. President. The following resolutions and bills are being called up for second reading and final passage calendar today. Bill numbers 160481, 160569, 160570, 160573, 160575, 160576, 160577, 160580, 160582, 160467, 160132, and 160362. All other bills and resolutions are being held. Thank you. One six zero. That one. We have an amendment. Yes. Okay. Um, Council President, I'd like to uh, make a, a change in the bills and resolutions today. One six zero one three eight is being amended today. Thank you. And Council. not on the final passage. In Thank you. Of today's calendar. Right. Thank you. Record shall reflect that. Um, we will now move to our public comment session. Uh, before doing that. Considering the bills and resolutions on the final passage calendar, uh, the public comment session will go as follows. If you are interested in testifying on a bill or resolution that is on a final passage calendar, if you have not already done so, please sign up at the table to my left. When your name is called, it will be your time to come up to the podium in the middle of the council chambers. There's a device on that podium. A light on is also on that device. When the light turns green, it will be your time to speak. When the light turns yellow, you will have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. And when it turns red, we'd ask that you please adhere to the guidelines and conclude your remarks. 
Thank you very much for your anticipated cooperation. Mr. Decker, please read the name of the first individual on the list. Winston Michael Ray. Commenting on 160575. First, my obedience to Almighty God, Yah, who is allowing me this opportunity to uh, speak to you. I have how many? Three minutes? I'll get right to the point. The Bible speaks of a two-edged sword. And here's my two-edged sword. Ladies and gentlemen of this distinguished body, to the mayor, Mayor James Kinney. Am I saying that right? I'm from New Orleans. Speak, sir, if you could speak into the mic, because they oh, keep turning. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, please. My name is Winston Michael. I'm homeless. And I'm so happy that I'm homeless. I'm the homeless, uh, happiest homeless man in the world because uh, the president and I are involved in a campaign called Operation Hobo, which is an acronym for Homeless Ones Barack Obama. Let me get to the point. Uh, Philadelphia has uh, the opportunity, have the opportunity to be the first city in the nation to end what I dub as revenue segregation and economic Jim Crow, which is the great wage and income disparity between the haves and have-nots. Now, I just came from Harrisburg, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, a few days ago. Uh, I tried to meet with the governor. I offered him $2 billion if he would stand with me to uh, uh, bring this issue out to the nation. He hasn't responded to me. So I'm going to make the same offer to your city. I see you're in need of a few dollars. We're prepared to uh, donate, at least, well, contribute, donate, $24 million dollars of this infusion of new money we're going to get from launching a worldwide marketing movement called, let me spell it, silver, worldwide, S-I-L-V-E-R, a dollar sign S, civil rights movement. Ladies and gentlemen, unbeknownst to the people in my city of New Orleans, America's CIVIL civil rights era is no more as of 6.03 p.m. on April 4th uh, of, of this year, 2016. I have so much to say, quotes and so forth, I only have three minutes, but this is the deal. Uh, I would like to see this chamber packed, standing room only. The fire marshals have to keep telling people to don't block the door on July 4th, which happens to be President Obama's daughter's 18th birthday. And we have a present for, for that young lady, as well as for America, um, which will be 240 years. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Clark, Mr. President, uh, I would like to know, would you all be able to uh, join in with me as leaders of this great city, along with the homeless, because I'm going to be all over your city very soon after this meeting, uh, passing out flyers, leaflets, leaflets, talking to We're going to end homelessness. Bottom line, we're prepared to pay up to $3,000 to those who have stressed out bills in this country. We can service 1,036 people at a time. For every $3 million we bring in for marketing undeniable, incontrovertible intelligence information, it's Thank already arranged. It's just Thank a matter of Philadelphia wants. Thank you. Can I leave my phone number real quick? My phone number, if anyone wants to reach me, is area code 2. Thank you for your consideration. We will take that under consideration. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, sir. Joe Schiavo. Commenting on 160575. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, members of council. Mm -hmm. My name is Joe Schiavo, and I'm speaking today on behalf of the Philadelphia Crosstown Coalition uh, relative to Bill 160525. Uh, relative to this bill, um, we're concerned that this does turn the planning process on its head uh, relative to the issue of Friday streets. Um, it places council's approval by ordinance ahead of the normal process of plan development, plan review, comment, and amendment prior to final favorable recommendation or rejection by the planning commission. Relative to code section 14304-7C, which this bill would amend, there is no apparent flaw in the current process. And, but unfortunately, by this bill, uh, 
160 I'm, I'm going to let it go today, but the bill that you're speaking on is actually not on the final passes calendar today. But you're so normally you have to, well, not normally, the rules call for you to speak only on bills that are on the final passes calendar, which this is not today, but you're halfway through your testimony. So please, just if you can just conclude your remarks. And you come back next week. And you, Okay. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Joe Danahel, commenting on 160 161, 160 1565, 160 580, 160 573, and 160 575. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. In 1790, the year the Constitution was passed, the average life expectancy of an adult was 18 years. I have been waiting to be paid for my stolen home. Sir, stolen sir, by the city of Philadelphia for Mr. 20 Shab years. I'm sorry, Mr. Danielle, can you start out with referencing the bill? And I know you're going to segue into something else, but it, if you could just start off with referencing the vacant property review committee or the resolutions on the bill that you're indicating. I thought we already went over that and we're now killing one minute of my time, which you're going to bang me for on the back end. Well, uh, you know, the, the rule this is that you're supposed to... This council continues to use the redevelopment authority, which there you has go. stolen so, my so, property. Start, this, this reference to the redevelopment authority. I have mean. it in my speech, sir. Now, do we want to start the race over again since I've been right. interrupted and you've interrupted the rules? And all right, all right, sir, sir. You, you know, we, we've had a long day, and I'm asking you. There you go. There you go. Thank you. These members seem to not care. This council is in clear violation of 42 U.S.C. 1982, 1983, 1985, 1986, 18 U.S.C. 2384, and 2381, among others. Can a firefighter be allowed to ignore a fire and let it burn for 22 years? This council is required by oath of office in U.S. law to act. The DA is required to prosecute. Sheriff and judges are required to not accept deed transfers unless due process is followed. These agencies are required to follow strict laws once clear evidence, like in my case, is presented. Action and prosecution is required. It is your duty of oversight and your action is required. Why then does the council not act? Doesn't the council care? You have an oath of office to support, obey, and defend the Constitution. Now let's get to work and actually do something to correct this injustice. You have a legal and moral obligation to do so. And to not interrupt the people because it's under our direction that your power is derived. I hope you understand that because Thank you. we clearly don't. Thank you for your testimony. Johnny Young, commenting on 160569. 575. Good morning, City Council. Morning. Um, I want to start off by saying I'm, I'm, I'm a little puzzled that 160575 is requesting. $40 million for the mortgage foreclosure program or something similar to that when April 2015 we started a, a audit of how the mortgage foreclosure program under Curtis Jones actually is conducting some, I'm going to say, errors. Here is almost 400 pages worth of errors that we found with the mortgage foreclosure program. This started in April 2015. We are at July almost, where the city council is going to go on vacation. Well, we yet have discovered a way to stop or repair the mortgage foreclosure program. So, as a businessman, and I guess as a politician, you got to help me understand how you're going to ask for $40 million to, a, to give to a program 
that still is broken. I am baffled by that. I am baffled. Any business person would say we can't put money back into something if we haven't fixed it. Now, if I'm missing something, I think someone can at least tell me how can we do that. It's waiting for someone to answer that. Either Curtis, Councilman Dom, Councilman Jim, Parker, someone has to help me with this one. That's, that's, that's backwards. Somebody can answer it. One, some, somebody can answer that. A three-year-old can tell you that's backwards. You can't put money back into something that's broke. Thank you, sir. Councilman Lee. It's broke. Councilman Jones. So the imperfect should never be the enemy of the good. Um, that's probably misquoted somehow, but the intent of what I'm saying is that um, the mortgage foreclosure program, which was started in, in, in fact by a action of this body, has helped thousands of people in the city of Philadelphia stay their home. Are they perfect? Nope. Do they get it wrong sometime? Yep. Should they be stopped and looked at, which we've agreed we would over time do? Yep. But if you count the good with the bad, they come out on top. These are, these are. I don't know when you say good or bad. You, you asked me, sir, you asked me not going to, to talk. I asked a couple I, people I, to talk. I, I, but, sir, sir, let me, let me you asked him, he's asking your question, we're not going to have it back before. Right. Let me finish. So. At our level, we are looking at them to try to tweak it to make it better. And we were, we're going to do that. He is right about some of the things that he brings up. Some of the things that he brings up is way over our pay grade about sovereign rights of the king, bringing down title that are decided at a court level, not at a council level. And so I understand his frustration because if it were me, I wouldn't want to hear, therefore, but... And, and nevertheless clauses in the law that clearly might be violating his rights. But I know I'm not going to stop a train that is helping people to solvency and safety just because they're not perfect. That's just not what I'm going to do. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Okay. And, and I, I don't think we were talking about the portion of the houses that were being saved. We're talking about a small, not a maybe a, a quarter of a portion that's actually causing a lot of the foreclosures to get into a program that, sh that may be doing well, but if it doesn't get into, if the, if the foreclosures doesn't get into the program, we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you, sir. Mr. Decker, proceed. Gladys Hughes. Good afternoon. My name is, good afternoon. My name is Gladys Hughes. I'm doing uh, 160575 about the uh, Corporation National Foreclosure, Foreclosure uh, Mitigation Counseling. Um, I want to I want to say some names. Um, Robert W. Kozak, U.S. National Bank Association. Fallonan, uh, Halliman, and Skimmage, LLP. ID C. Fox, John Kolesnik, Daniel G. Jan Daniel G. Skimmage, Janine R. Davy, Stephen Corbin. Esquire, Jonathan Ekowich, Zachary J. Jones, Ellen Kaiser, uh, uh, Seisler, Ellen Seisler, Judge, Courtney Dunn, Michael Bowman, Justin Kabaski, uh, Alan Aston Phillips, Paul Crushman. All have joined together to put my home of 35 years, a person who was not in default, 
was not in default with mortgage or taxes in a sheriff's sale do? All these people have done this. You say 40 million, I don't know why. Why is NFT MC broke? I don't know why. Um, I think they should be dismissed. Over 25,000 people have been put in ho by homelessness, okay? This has been done. My home is in a sheriff's cell, like I said, after I've been there for 35 years paying all the bills. Even my council people haven't helped me. I don't understand what's going on. I have until June 1st. July 1st, I have to do something before then. Nobody's helping. It's horrible. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tess Moore. <laughs> Sheila Lloyd. <laughs> Sheila Lloyd. There are no other speakers in the public comment list, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Decker. That concludes the public comment session. We now consider the bills and resolutions on the second reading and final pastor's calendar today. Mr. Decker, can you please read the title of 160481? A resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Land Bank deeds conveying title to certain properties located in the 7th Council Manor District pursuant to requirements of the Commonwealth Land Bank Act. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer an amendment to Resolution 160481. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to members. I move for the adoption of the amendment. If we move to property second, all those in favor of the amendment. Those opposed? Ayes have it. The amendment to 160481 is approved, and 160481 will be on the second reading and final passage calendar at our next session of council. Mr. Decker, 160659. A resolution, uh, resolution number 160569, entitled a resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon, situated in the 4th and 34th wards of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank I'm you. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Those opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution 160. 569 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 160570. A resolution adopting the report issued by Council's Special Committee on Criminal Justice Reform on how to prevent youth from becoming involved with the justice system in the summer of 2016. Chair again recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Those opposed, ayes have it, and resolution 160570 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 160573. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee, simple title, to certain city owned lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon, situated in the 19th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer an amendment to uh, Bill Number 160132. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members. I move for the adoption of the amendment. Councilwoman, uh, 573. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, I move for the adoption of that. Second. Thank sorry. you. Sorry, ahead of myself. It's, it's been moved and probably seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a long day and night. Yes. Uh, um, 160573 has been adopted. Thank you very much. Mr. Decker, 160575. A resolution respectfully urging Congress to provide adequate federal funding provided for housing counseling, namely, $60 million for the HUD Housing Counseling Assistance Program and $40 million for the Neighborhood Reinvestment Corporation's National Foreclosure Mitigation Counseling.
program, which are critical to ensuring that HUD-approved housing counseling agencies can continue to serve families in need in the city of Philadelphia and across the country. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. And resolution 160-575 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 160-576. A resolution also naming Wallace Street from Broad Street to 13th Street as Samuel Staten Senior Drive. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution 160-576 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 160-577. A resolution authorizing the Director of the Office of Supportive Housing on behalf of the City of Philadelphia to file a, propo a proposal for fiscal year 2017 Emergency Solutions Grant Program funding with the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. Chair recognizes Councilman Don. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. 160577 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 160580. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city-owned lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 31st, 31st and 39th wards of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Those opposed, ayes have it, and resolution 160580 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 160582. A resolution calling on the Pennsylvania General Assembly to increase the penalty of the state law on invasion of privacy for photographing intimate parts of a person in a public place without their knowledge, increasingly known as upskirt photography laws. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Those opposed, ayes have it, 160-582 is adopted. <clears throat> Mr. Decker, 160-138. An ordinance amending various provisions of the Philadelphia Code, including in Title IV, the Philadelphia Building Construction and Occupancy Code, Title IX, Regulation of Businesses, Trades, and Professions, and Title XIV, Zoning and Planning, to preclude issuance of certain licenses and permits to any applicant who is delinquent in payments owed to the city. Chair recognizes Councilman Dyer. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to offer an amendment to Bill Number 160138. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of Council. I move for the adoption of the amendment. The amendment has been motioned and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Bill Number 160138 has been amended and will be placed on the second reading and final passes calendar at our next session of council. Uh, Mr. Decker, 160467. An ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for fiscal year 2017 within the grants revenue fund from the, from the director of finance provision for other grants to the managing director. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom, Councilman Green, Aye. Councilman Greenlee, Aye. Councilwoman Gim, Aye. Councilman Heenan, Aye. Councilman Johnson, Aye. Councilman Jones, Aye. Councilman O'Neill, <coughs> Councilman O, Aye. Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conrona Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Aye. Councilman Squilla, Aye. Councilman Taubenberger, Aye. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 17 and nays are 0. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative the bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160132. An ordinance amending Title 19 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Finance, Taxes, and Collections by adding a new chapter 194100 entitled New Sustainable Businesses to reduce the tax burden on new sustainable businesses. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, I offer an amendment to Bill Number 160132. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members, and I move for its adoption. 
The amendment to bill number 160132 has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Bill number 160132 is amended and will be placed on our second reading and final passage calendar in our next session of council. Mr. Decker, 160362. An ordinance amending Chapter 16300 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Maintenance and Supervision to require installation of LED lightning, lighting in connection with large city public works projects. This bill has been heard two, on se two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Councilwoman Conrina Sanchez. Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Councilman Taubenberger. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 17 and nays are 0. Majority of members present. Voting in affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, you have any additional resolutions? A resolution authorizing the City Council's Joint Committees on Licenses and Inspections and Public Safety to hold hearings on the issue of negligent landlords, property manager, foreclosed vacant residential properties, problem rental properties and their effects, on the surrounding community and in furtherance of such investigation, authorizing the issuance of subpoenas to compel the attendance of witnesses and the production of documents to the full extent authorized under Section 2401 of the Home Rule Charter. Carter, introduced by Councilman Heenan. Chair, recognize Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. Move for the adoption of resolution. Second. Move and probably second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring the Winfield Residents Association for their diligent work in employing and mentoring youths during the summer, introduced by Councilman Jones. Chair, recognize Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring the Overbrook Park Civic Association for their diligent work in employing youths during the summer. Introduced by Councilman Jones. Chair again recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on Fiscal Stability and Intergovernmental Cooperation to hold hearings regarding the City's operating budget for fiscal year 2017 to examine, analyze, and provide oversight on the financial condition of the City of Philadelphia. Introduced by Councilwoman Gunnarina Sanchez on behalf of Council President Clark. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gunnarina Sanchez. Thank you, Council President. I move for its adoption. Been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing June 2016 as Disability Pride Month in the City of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilman Green. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Councilman. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring the life of the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, who passed away Friday, June 3rd, 2016 at the age of 74 after a 32 year battle with Parkinson's disease. Chair recognizes Councilman Dow. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. <clears throat> and a resolution honoring and recognizing Philadelphia Business Journal and their 2016 40 under 40 class introduced by Councilman Taubenberger. Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on Aging to conduct public hearings regarding financial abuse of senior citizens in Philadelphia introduced by Councilman Taubenberger. Chair again recognizes Councilman Taubenberg. Thank you again, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Public Health and Human Services Committee to hold hearings on obtaining life saving naloxone at minimal cost and distributing it most effectively. Introduced by Councilman O. Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing public hearings to evaluate more cost e efficient and effective methods for the City of Philadelphia to address its perennial pothole problem. Introduced by Councilman O. 
Chair, one more time, recognize Councilman O. Thank you. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution commemorating the 58th anniversary of the death of In Ho O oh and the response by his parents offering forgiveness to the teenage murderers, requesting that the juveniles receive the most generous treatment possible allowed by law and establishing a fund to be used for their religious, educational, vocational, and social guidance introduced by Councilman O. To recognize Councilman O. Thank you. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. There are no other resolutions on the final passage calendar, Thank Mr. You. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. Any speeches on the part of minority? Speeches on the part of majority, and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Yay. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. <clears throat> this month, the Forbes magazine published the world's most powerful women for 2016. Who are the world's most powerful women this year? They are the smartest and toughest female business leaders, entrepreneurs, investors, scientists, philanthropists, and CEOs making their mark in the world today. They're women who are building billion dollar brands, calling the shots in the financial markets, and crisscrossing the globe to broker international agreements. Of course, I was most struck by those women who are now world leaders and presidents or heads of states, and this number has more than doubled since 2005, according to a Pew Research study. Who are some of these world's most powerful, exceptional women? In slot number 33, it is the Attorney General Loretta Lynch for public service and politics. In slot number 21, it's Oprah Winfrey, of course, around media and entertainment. Number 13, Michelle Obama. Number seven, Sheryl Sandberg, executive with Facebook and, of course, author of the book Lean In. And number four for philanthropy, Melinda Gates. This week, the ultimate glass, seating, glass ceiling was shattered across the United States of America. For the first time ever, a woman will be a major party's nominee to become president of the United States. She ranks number two on the fourth list of the world's most powerful women, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. What's this small cliff note women's history lesson? In the early 1800s, women were second class citizens. Women were expected to restrict their sphere of interest to the home and the family. Women were not encouraged to obtain a real education or pursue a professional career. After marriage, women did not have the right to own their own property, keep their own wages, or sign a contract. In addition, all women were denied the right to vote. Only after decades of intense political activity did women eventually win the right to vote. In a women's history class, we would know that it was the 19th Amendment in 1920 that granted us the right to vote. Almost 100 years later, the significance of Hillary Clinton being the presumed nominee is not just a victory for women, it's a victory for the nation. And we have to be reminded that she and President Barack Obama stand on the shoulders of the former Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm was a pioneer for her generation, a woman of many firsts, the first African-American Congresswoman from New York, the first African-American to run for president, the first woman to run for president in 1972. As a woman and as an African-American woman in the halls of government, I am reminded that excellence is not an act, it has to be a habit. This morning, I salute Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who will be the first woman to be a major party's nominee to become President of the United States, a woman focused on building bridges and not walls. This is an important moment for Philadelphia as we look to host the Democratic National Convention, and it is an important moment for the nation. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I usually don't speak on issues that, uh, outside City Council, but uh, there was an article in the newspaper today that made the few hairs still on my head stand up, and I have to, uh, I, I felt I had a comment. I'm talking about um, uh, an article uh, talking about House Bill number 1947. That's a bill that would give victims of uh, abuse uh, 
to the age of 50 instead of 30 to sue their abusers or the institutions that employed or supervised them. And the story relays, relates how apparently uh, the Catholic Church, uh, and I'll uh, state real fast that I'm Catholic, okay? The Catholic Church has uh, worked real hard apparently uh, through the uh, um, coordination of, of Archbishop Chaput's office to aggressively go after any legislator, particularly Catholic legislator, that um, voted for this bill. The bill has passed the House, is now waiting passage in the Senate. Now, I know some people might not like me saying this, but when I saw this story, I uh, quickly thought of the, of the Academy Award winning movie, of, I guess just last year, called Spotlight, where uh, it was a story about the, the uh, Boston Globe and their expose on uh, clergy abuse. And there was a, a, I thought, a pretty moving uh, scene in that where the actor Mark Ruffalo, uh, the character he was portraying, who was, he, who was Catholic, was also talking to other reporters that are Catholic, expressing his frustration that the paper wasn't moving fast enough on this issue. And he yelled out, it could, it could have been me, it could have been you, it could have been anybody. And I guess I relate to that because as a Catholic growing up in the 60s, it could have been me. Luckily for me, it wasn't. But I know somebody that it was. And this is a very, very heart-wrenching issue to have to deal with if, if you were a victim. It oftentimes, you internalize it for a long time from what I understand. I saw the effect it had on this gentleman. I didn't know him that well, but I knew him well enough to see what it did to him. Giving that person extra time to try to work all this out and then get proper justice to me is a fair bill, a fair law. Uh, and to try to say, as apparently has been done, that, um, that somehow you're betraying your faith by being against this bill just seems terribly off base. For example, uh, State Representative Martina White from Northeast Philadelphia uh, apparently uh, was told uh, that a priest told her aide that uh, she was not welcome at some events because she was in support of House Bill 1947. So the only thing I can say to Representative White is, don't be discouraged, you did the right thing. I hope the Senate passes the bill, and I hope this becomes law, uh, just speaking for myself. And, and at the end of the story, there's a quote from Representative Nick Micorelli, uh, and it's one of those things that I, I would like to say I wish I could have said. He, he states, I quote, I would much rather be chastised from the altar than to be damned for not allowing justice to be done, unquote. And let me just add that, as a, again, as a Catholic, um, they, uh, if the church right now, is, I know, is going after legislators on this bill, but if they choose to widen their, their um, scope and go after uh, Catholic office holders who support that bill, uh, the name is Greenlee, G-R-E-E-N-L-E-E. -E -E. And uh, it's a still represent uh, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown's line. Uh, when they print that name, they can put it in bold, underlined, with exclamation points. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you. Let me say I certainly agree with those comments made by both Councilman Greenlee and Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds Brown. I rise today on two issues. One is that the water rates in Philadelphia will rise by nearly 10% in the next two years. Bills are slated uh, to go monthly from 67.43 to 74.05. And, uh, and that's pretty rough. The water rate board said that they're going to try to uh, study and implement an income-based assistance program. My question is, why couldn't you figure that out at the same time you were talking about raising rates? But it's always that way. As you all know, I'm still waiting from June 14th last year for people to be made whole on North 52nd Street. So I'm hoping that since they'll say next spring they're going to come out with a, with a water assistance rate based on income, that that happens. So that's something we should watch because I'm not encouraged, not when it comes to the water department. The second thing I'd like to 
um, let everyone know is uh, my state representative, Dr. James R. Roebuck, 188th District, who, in fact, he was chosen by Lucian Blackwell, and his wife was a teacher of 33 years in the Philadelphia school system, uh, thir uh, 33 years, the majority of at uh, Meredith School. She played music for many churches. In fact, uh, she passed uh, from lung cancer. Her funeral is tomorrow across the street. She played at that church as well. And I hope that all of you will uh, extend condolences. Keep Jim in your prayers. He's also one of my committeemen in the 46th Ward. And uh, she was a wonderful person, a good person, and loved her neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. That concludes our speeches today, and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that council stand adjourned until Thursday, June 16, 2016, at 10 a.m. Thank you. It's been moved and probably second. The council stand adjourned until Thursday, June 16, 2016, 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Thank you all very much. The motion carries.